Alright, um, this is my first video and what I'm going to be doing is a few tutorials on how to make some not proper good dubstep but try and get a couple of steps up the ladder of uh, dubstep for you. So this tutorial is going to be a wobble bass but I'm trying not to make it like the other ones on YouTube so what I'm going to do is if there's anything I haven't covered, anything you need to know, just send me a comment, send me a message and I'll try and do that in video for you because obviously I can do this video in video thing which is good. So yeah I'm trying to explain how to do a good wobble bass and maybe explain a little bit about ES2 as well because some of the tutorials just kind of show, assume that you know what a modulation matrix is, things like that in the sampler and things so basically maybe start from scratch just show you that what I needed to know a few months ago get you on the road and obviously try and be interactive so I'm really looking forward to any comments and hoping that it'll go well cheers right so close this first so what we need to do is open logic right I've already got a project open so you can see here we've got instrument one no plugin it's all blank right if you press T click away you can set your tempo just drag that up I've set mine at 140 but that don't matter really whatever you want it has obviously right so smack ES2 in there right so we've got our ES2 now and it sounds shit right so anyway I've downloaded a complete reset patch I'll bang that in the uh, that in the fucking description. Right. So do a little four bar thing. You can just follow what I'm doing. Sorry if you can't. Right, so we've got this completely rubbish. So that's Right, you can see ES2. Right, what have we got there? Well, usually, it's quite important actually. When, when you make a wobble bass, split it up. Like, I'm not going to show you it all now, but I can word it. So what you want to do is, you've got your first patch. What I might do is after you've made the wobble bass, say it's like wow wow whatever. I'll stick a sine wave, maybe just one out of the sampler before it, you know, while it's self oscillating, if you know what that means. Um, yeah, so I'll just stick a sine wave underneath and just play the notes in instead of putting an LFO on it. So, anyway. Right, so. Bass sound on. Pretty crap is the important bit. EQ, right click analyze the all ways. See all the bass in that. That bass is just gonna mess up everything you want. What you wanna do is break the bass down, you know, low cut all of all of it out, even if you can't hear it, it's there. So you're cutting all this bottom end bass out as you can see, and you're gonna put that in later. Cause it's always better to insert bass than have bass doing what it wants. You need to you need to control it to get it to work effectively, otherwise you're just going to get this this bass that's just breaking off everything and it's just going to clash with everything else and you're not going to get a good sound in. So yeah, I'm cutting that at about 100 just to cut out the bass, right. What I always do, forget the compressor, turn it off. This is just a distortion plugin, it's called Camel Crusher. It's free, so if you want it, you want it. I just really like some of the distortion you can get on it. I mean, mech distortion on it is just something else about it. See? Brings out the growl. What I tend to do as well is stick a multi presser on it because instead of compressing a sound, it seems counterproductive. 
but if I stick a multi-presser on it, then I got, you know this growl that you're hearing in like the proper mid bit? So you can hear that already. Right. Put us all the way down. Uh, see this area, router. Fuck the vector because it's well complicated and stupid. Right. Target. Well, the target, it's quite simple, right? You only have to play with one of these. It's like a mixing desk, it looks more complicated. So cut one and two, just refers to the filter. Cut off one and two. So, right. Cut off one, this side of the filter, one. Source, LFO2. Already. All you need to do, this slider, basically, how much you want. Right, so. I like 8D. This little section here, forget the left, but this little section will choose what kind of wave you want modulating modulating your main wave. So you've got your sound and this modulates it. It's the, the easiest way you can imagine it is I can't like it's like you've got your sound and then if you imagine this is on a top level and there's something underneath that sound that's just pushing it up and down like in different directions so whatever you want it to do it can do as long as yeah, it's hard to explain it's to do with frequencies like an LFO is a sound but a human it's not in the frequency range that a person can hear so all it does is it kind of attaches itself to any other signal it's playing with and kind of brings it in and out of that spectrum if you understand what I mean if it's hard to explain, but it's more one of them things that when you've used it a lot, you get to grips with it. So. I like that. That's a wobble bass, basically. Right, okay. So. You're gonna need some pants on this. So that's peaking all over the place beautifully. Um, yeah, that's it. If there's any questions, I know that the sound sounds shit, but I haven't put a lot of time into it, and usually I'm not one that makes sounds fucking out of one patch. I mean, some people delay and compress, and then I, I layer things quite a lot. Yeah, like... I just don't like ES2. I've tried for ages to use it, but I have no patience with it because you're limited really badly. I mean, just having three to mix, I mean, all I can say is definitely get a synth like Albino 3, even if it's a demo. And trust me, if you're planning on releasing stuff with ES2, it's not really worth it. I, I use it for, you know, little jingles, things like that, you know, maybe... I want to make some 16 bit sounds, something like that, you know, a bit of a bit crusher on it. It can be really effective, but it's just no good at making these wide sounds without layering and detuning and just going the long way around everything that you could do in five minutes on another sim twice as effectively, you know. But that's it, just, just go be your own way, it's up to you. Anyway, uh, yeah, let me know. Comments, everything, welcome. Cheers, guys.